Hey everyone, this is a new episode of Beirut Buzz. I hope you're all doing well. My guest today is the counter tenor opera singer, uh, Matteo Al Khudr. So he has the most rare male voice ever. Um, he is also an actor. And we're going to see in a few what other talents he has hidden. Hi, Matteo. Hi, Dean. Chu, have you settled into the festive spirit yet? Uh, yes, yes, I'm trying to. Actually, it was a little bit uh, harsh this year. That, uh, no, the spirit is not here yet. But I'm trying to create it here. So, <laughs> slowly, slowly, but surely. So, or not yet? Actually, I want I wanted to feel the the vibe. I know it was not getting here in Lebanon. It was very late, so I went to Athens for a week, and um, I, I was like very mesmerized by the, the Christmas vibes there, and I brought it with me. So as soon as I got to Beirut, I did the tree, I set up the decorations in the house, I did the tree of my uncle, the tree of my parents. So that colors Christmas is here. Thank you. Okay, amazing. Um, so speaking about your family, you grew up surrounded by music and art, um, but your music journey officially started at your mom's birthday party, which is so cool. And I think everyone wants to hear that story. Of course, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was such a long time ago, Mishmaul. But you know, the thing is that I remember it really, really well because it it marked. And it was a turn, turning point in my career and my life. Yani, you know, it was not something very, very, uh, habitual. Yani, no, I had I couldn't take I was actually, I was, I was kind of big art, big kid artist when I was a kid. When I was growing up, yani, I was doing theater. I was doing ballet. I was doing um, peinture. I was painting. I was taking painting courses. I was very different from the kids uh, around me at school, and uh, my parents saw that actually, and they were. I come from a family uh, with, uh, uh, with a very, very educated background, both sides. So uh, these are people who traveled a lot, who've seen a lot, who inherited a lot of culture and education. So uh, it was uh, rare in Beirut to find someone who was encouraging art back then and encouraging music and encouraging um, all this field in a, in, a, in a guy. So uh, since I was a kid, I was... Uh, taking piano lessons at home and then uh, painting lessons etc and singing was just a hobby i was doing it under the shower in, in my house alone imitating voices from disney uh, voices of maria callas and uh, uh, all these amazing singers uh, that i used to hear uh, on sundays at home and i was surrounded by art so uh, you know a kid is very influenced by everything that's happening around him and uh, uh, later on, when I was uh, 16, 17, I was a kid of, of my generation, so I was trying to party a lot with my friends. I was I had a lot of friends at school. Uh, we were like doing fake IDs to go into nightclubs in Beirut, and Beirut was fantastic back then, really. I, mean, I had the most amazing uh, childhood ever. Uh, people were so... Beirut was rising a lot after the war, and uh, it had a lot of nightclubs everywhere, and a lot of... Uh, you know, you remember um, downtown Beirut when it was like booming. So mm. I was one of those people who were like uh, every day uh, somewhere in downtown Beirut. Um, <laughs> and this one time I was, my mom was doing her birthday in downtown Beirut in a, in a, in a, in a place. And uh, I was 17 years old and I was uh, invited by my mom to, to, to sing a song for her, etc. And I was doing it as a surprise, actually. And uh, everybody, everybody, everybody was shocked because I... They didn't expect to hear me sing with this voice. And, and I, I even didn't know what was this voice because I grew with it and uh, I, was, I was used to it, but I didn't know that it was a country tenor voice. So everybody was telling me, wow, this is amazing. And two people came to me uh, at the end of the party and they told me that we need to do something together. And they handed me their card and, you know, but... With Lebanese people, you're never sure. So I was telling myself, this is a big blah, blah, and it's not going to uh, end anywhere. So uh, a week later, they called me back and they told me to come to a studio with uh, uh, Guy Manoukian and uh, to try to, uh, to, to record something in a studio. I was like, okay, let's go and try it. So I tried a few songs, we recorded them. And then apparently uh, the two guys were doing a, a very nice job behind the curtains. And uh, they sent the, the demo to a lot of producers in, uh, in Europe. So two months later, 
it was uh, summer i get a call from uh, the people and uh, from the, the the two guys and they told me that uh, universal music france wanted to see me because they were very interested in the demo that uh, they sent so i packed my bags with my mom <laughs> i was super <laughs> excited we went to paris and we met the producers in universal music studios and uh, they handed me a contract and actually my my hobby was becoming a job uh, by the minute so <laughs> i found myself at age 18 uh, moving to paris and uh, with a big contract this is how i started so at 18 you signed up uh, you signed with universal music yeah and you moved to france to study music as well and architecture right absolutely yeah so uh, you also worked in fashion there how yes. you oh my god you know a lot of things yeah yes. <laughs> yeah, I did my research. Um, how, how would you describe this whole experience, moving uh, to France at this young age? Yeah, this is actually my mom's biggest uh, fear. That uh, how, she, as a Lebanese mom, how did she let her son of 18 years old move alone to a city like Paris? She was like. Uh, I, I cannot imagine how I did this and I told her but the result is fine so aren't you happy she was like laughing a lot about it but she told me that if if the decision w was like now in these moments like to 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 do a, such a decision she was like no 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 I would have I wouldn't have done it anyway to the long story short is that uh, when you're in Paris like you're exposed to a lot of things and since I'm a very curious guy uh, and the decision and the, the the condition of my dad was For me to do music, I was uh, I had to enroll uh, a serious between brackets uh, um, uh, thing is that to, I have to continue my architectural study because at, at, at La Base I wanted to do I wanted to be an archaeologist, but he told me no, uh, archae being an archaeologist is not something that's gonna bring you money and <laughs> but I, I I did I did opera studies instead so <laughs> anyway. Um, I did architecture at the same time as the conservatoire, so I was learning music there. So there I discovered that I was a countertenor, that my voice was called countertenor voice. And so I was studying the countertenor voice, how, who was the most famous countertenors, what is the repertoire. And you know, in Paris, since I'm a very curious guy, you're, you're exposed to a lot of things. You're exposed, the art, art is everywhere, museums are everywhere. And since I did the fine arts in Paris, Les Beaux-Arts, so... I, I was always between the museums and uh, fashion is on the street. You have the biggest fashion weeks ever. So my mom saw this attraction to, towards fashion and she told me that she has some contacts there so I can be an assistant buyer. So it was a fantastic two years of my life. I was while doing the, the while doing my architectural study and my opera studies i was in my time of doing assistant buyer so i had access to all the biggest names on earth like we're doing the dior defile lanvin um, uh, john galliano uh, emmanuel angaro we were doing all the shows and the parties etc so i really uh, was enjoying myself because i was discovering a lot of things meeting a lot of interesting people at a very young age and uh, this brought me where i am actually so yeah this is kind of an education a street mm -hmm. education it sounds so fun actually yeah it was um, so fun so um you're an artist and let's talk a bit about the inspiration um you once said that you're mainly inspired by travels visuals and experiences rather than key figures in music mm -hmm. uh, so what's one experience you've lived and that has inspired you so much uh, okay actually there was uh, two big events in my life that marked me a lot uh, 10 years ago when the voice france started and everybody was telling me you have to do the voice you have to do the voice i wasn't interested at all to do the voice i thought that i had no message to deliver i my, my only message to deliver was like my voice my counter tenor voice but i had no hidden message to deliver no story yet no not so much experience lived to tell something so i was not uh, i was not answering the call of the voice and then uh, my mom got cancer four years ago it was very 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 hard for us and um, to see this wonderful woman very very young very energetic very uh, very positive very uh, she, she's a laughing lady like she laughs all the time and uh, to see this this big big figure of my life uh, uh, 
like uh, really falling into pieces and uh, suffering a lot and it uh, i was really really very down and i thought that uh, music was the only way to for me to, to to have the salvation you know it was very hard for me but when i was singing uh, back then i was really 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 singing for her so uh, and she healed and she she was amazing and she dealt with it uh, in a in a very glorious and very strong way and uh, then there was the 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 beirut revolution and uh, when i came back to beirut and i was seeing beirut falling apart i was like oh my god what's happening um and i needed to do something so i was on the street every day uh, it was one of the best moments of our lives to to to, to have this this big wave of hope finally coming with this big unity and etc and i was on the street every day and then the voice called me and they told me we need you absolutely to come and uh, represent your country i was like okay now i'm ready and i left this but i was really feeling guilty actually to leave the street and to go there and i told myself no my revolution actually my kind of revolution is to be on the stage of the voice and i want i want to make everybody turn and because lebanese people and all lebanese diaspora around the world will be needing this i'm sure if it's going to be new, good news for them i hope because i didn't know anything back then that if the ju- jury was going to turn or not so i left the street and i went to do the blind audition at the voice and it happened the four the four juries um, four judges turned and it was a big moment for Lebanon it was a big moment for me and i was actually this was the biggest moment actually these two uh, events my mom and the revolution gave me you know this strength to go and represent my country and give my country good news actually after all all of this voila i love how you phrased it my kind of revolution is to be on stage um <laughs> so you did participate in season 9 of the voice and yeah. كلنا حضرنا your blind audition it's amazing you completely amazed the jury and the audience thank you thank you so much um, you you um وصلت للباتل ستيج um do you think the song choice of Lara Fabian put you at a disadvantage because you sing a song of that, course, that of you course. from in a genre انت ما كثير ما بتغني usually ايه هلا لو جونغ اللي بتغني اللي عطوني هي هو الجونغ Avec les amis. But, uh, no. uh, no. when, when they called me, I was at the hotel room and they called me, they told me, Lara Fabian chose this song for you to do it with a duet with Marco. I was like, come on, guys. Sorry? Le rêve bleu a whole new world in English. I was like, really, guys? But how do you want to, how do you want me to sing it in a countertenor voice or in a normal pop voice? They told me, no, 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 we're going to decide later. I was really hoping that they were going to choose the countertenor voice or at least both voices. No, they, they and she was very, not, not not very sure, actually. Lara Fabian was not very sure about the, the choice of the song. And, uh, but the production told them that they couldn't do anything they already signed the copyrights and 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 they couldn't sh- uh, choose another song at the last minute so i was doomed actually and I, i i gave what i had to give and i did what i had to do and i knew it from the beginning that the, it was it was not going to work because i've i've been chosen and actually what was very frustrating is that during the rehearsals of a whole new world uh, of this of the battles i was already preparing with the production house the next step which was a huge bomb artistic wise i was going to think uh, we are the champions of freddie mercury oh. and queen but with a counter tenor voice with a whole rock band and it was so frustrating to leave the stage while i i didn't show the people what i was capable of and it was very frustrating for me but I, i'm i'm very sport <laughs> so but i, I bowed and i just uh, but fuck it perform uh, the song you did not you did not perform with the rock band somewhere else actually i did it and this is why oh, i was wow. very very happy a few years ago i will i signed the contract when i when i came back to lebanon i used to live in paris for 10 years and then in geneva uh, for two years and i decided to come back to lebanon uh, and uh, I, i i've signed a contract with you uh, with the music hall so i did uh, for a year and a half shows in music hall i was the opening act and uh, the first year i was doing a freddie mercury show so uh, we are the champion was part of the show and it was really fantastic with the country tenor voice and the rock band coming up this about so on the voice france uh, do you encourage opera singers to participate 
ان ذا فويس لانه يوجلي يعني كثير قليل الجادجز يبرموا موست اوف ذا تايم ذي ثينك انه ذي دو نوت هاف انف اكسبيرينس بهيدا الجونغ تو تو جايد ذا تالنت ابسولوتلي يو سيد ات اي دونت انكارج اوبرا سينجرز وات ذي لايكت اباوت مي از ذا كاونتر تينر فيرساتايل فويس ذا ذا بيردد لوك ذا ماسلد لوك ذا مانلي لوك وذ ذا كونتراست وذ ذا فيري ثين اند ايثيريل فويس ذات اي هاف سو ذي وانتد ذس هول برودكت These these kind of shows are really shows for entertainment, for for emotions, etc. But if you think that you're gonna win only by with your voice, it's not gonna work. And if an opera singer is gonna sing, uh, there if he has nothing else to offer, they don't have the experience to lead an opera singer. They want something else. They don't have it. Mm-hmm. This is so sad. It no. is. It is. But there are opera singer opera singers competitions that are not very marketed. for the grand public but they only want the effect for everything that's grand public they want a huge effect like i did they wanted this effect and later on they didn't care about what's happening mm-hmm. so anyway. um, if we want to move away shway from music mm. um you're also a painter and you own a home deco gallery um yeah. i think it's called nomad home art wow you did your homework <laughs> <laughs> So where did this passion for fine art come from? Actually for me being an artist is being a complete artist it does not come in a box you know so if you ha- if you are a singer you can also be a painter it does not alienate the fact that you can be a good decorator or you can I have I have something you know I have too much talents in me that I need to uh, I need I need them to perform everywhere like uh, for example the we had this passion I have a passion for orient you know I'm a Levantine guy I come from the Levant I I've, I've been raised in a Greek uh, Turkish Lebanese family uh, of many origins so uh, this this whole passion uh, of the the, the art of artifacts les artisanat etc it, it came, came it came also um, when I was a kid so because I was raised in this home and uh, the thing is that Lebanon gave me a lot a lot a lot for me to to be passionate about for example uh, all the artifacts artisanal archaeology the history balbec the museums the uh, they they nourished me and paris actually gave me the, the 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 strength for me to embrace it so when i came back to lebanon i went actually to to for a visit to istanbul and i was really mesmerized by the country mesmerized by the culture and then uh I have a very good friend of mine who became my partner in Nomad and we decided actually to 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 have this uh, online gallery uh, together and to bring artifacts from the Orient uh, to to the people around us and uh, with a very affordable price and a very high quality. So um, voila. So this is uh, our passion for Nomad uh, came from a passion inside of us actually. We were decorating our houses her and I and uh, we we ended up decorating people's houses so it's great to have uh, the customers very happy and to find actually when you go into a house and you find your product there displayed it's amazing um do you do you listen to music when you paint yeah yeah all the time all the time all the time i listen to music actually all the time when i get dressed when i get take my shower when i when i paint when i uh, when i work on my computer when i do a lot of things i i I listen to music. Music is always here, and not necessarily opera or baroque music. Nice. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so another hobby uh, that you have is acting. You played the role of Alex in um, in Khabsa. Uh, I I love this character. Um, this was your first experience as an actor. How was it? Did you love it? Uh, actually, I I loved it so much, and. Um, I was a little bit afraid of uh, how it started. Uh, it started actually with a phone call. I was uh, I was here in Beirut uh, working on a project and I was like uh, getting this phone call from a random person telling me that uh, there is a part in a Lebanese movie that's uh, being written and uh, uh, they think that they need me for the part. I was like, "Okay, Lebanese movie, I'm not a big fan." Um So I'm not a big connoisseur of the Lebanese movies. So I, we all know the the big, huge hit movies from Nadine Labaki and the West Beirut, uh, and and and. But uh, you know, like uh, a lot of Lebanese movies, they don't attract me at all. So I was like, okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, just send me the script, and I will see. It was my first phone call as 
an actor for an actor experience. So I was like, okay. They sent me the script. I was reading it. By line, I was like, oh my god! But the character looks like me a lot. So it looks like my personality. I don't even have to really, really act or embrace another personality for this. So um, I went there for the casting, and they told me actually uh, they gave me some lines to read, and I was like reading them very spontaneously because I'm a very spontaneous person, and I really speak by the uh, with the heart. So I was like. Uh, trying to do some trials and they were like falling in love with the character and they told me no 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 we need you absolutely and uh, you are really the alex that we want and it all started like that and actually they liked they liked my my character so much like how i was playing it that they asked me to do a lot of spontaneous uh, acting too and to add into the person uh, to, to the personage i was like okay so alex was a little bit between matteo and uh, what they wrote so It was a fabulous experience, and what came after it because I was—he's playing a gay character, and you know, in this, in this uh, uh, part of the world, uh, being gay uh, out and about is not very, 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 very well welcomed. So I was like uh, trying to cope with the fact that I might get bullied. <laughs> I was like, no. Actually, all the reviews were fantastic. There's no, not one single critique uh, uh, concerning Alex or uh, or my personal life. Or I didn't get, you know, any hate messages or anything. So, I was very proud of the work, and I was very proud of the uh, of the uh, aftermath of the movie. The effect was amazing. We we won a, um, we won an award in Brussels, the film festival. We traveled all together. We went to Dubai for the screening. It was really really good to see all these people laughing in the. In the um, cinema yes. and the, in the movie theater, yeah. and then uh, during the lockdown, it got viral again because we signed a contract with Netflix, so it was on Netflix. So, so in during lockdown, uh, uh, everybody was on Netflix, and we signed on with Netflix, so the movie got uh, a big boost, and uh, Khapsa went back again, uh, hitting everybody, and we got messages, a lot of messages, and a lot of compliments. So we were very happy about it. Actually, yeah, I watched it during lockdown. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, do you have any Christmas concerts coming up? Uh, Actually, yeah, uh, talking about the actor thingy, the, uh, I just played uh, a part in uh, in, uh, in a series now. Now it's on Shahid, and we're very proud of it because it's really, really, really amazingly done. It's called Shatia Beirut. So I have a, I have a small part, but. Uh, Uh, they, they 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 loved Alex so much. Can you imagine that they gave me an empty script and they told me this is the character that we want. You put whatever you want. You say whatever you want. It's amazing. So depending on the situation, I was really very spontaneous in my script, and uh, it, it it started airing uh, on the 28th of November. And people are like stopping me on the street, at the gym, and parking lots, and everywhere, so telling me that it. I know it's it's a very very small uh, part and it's not a huge part. I'm the I'm the assistant of uh, of uh, une tenancière de maison close uh, of a bordel. So uh, it's very funny and no, because the, the 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 series is very dramatic and it's very sad and I'm adding the the funny part. So everybody's very happy about that. So yeah yeah yeah, it's going on, on really well. I'm very Shahed, happy. Or uh, it's it's gonna come up and share it soon. It is on Shahid, actually. It is on Shahid. Okay. It's called Shatia Beirut. It's, it has a lot of big names and it's uh, done by Sabah Media. Really, really, very, 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 very good series. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> it's really nice. I'm gonna watch it right after the, the interview. Um, Matteo, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a very lovely conversation. Um, anytime, Lien Anjad, anytime. Any uh, and for the Christmas concerts on the 23rd, I'm the guest of uh, the Lebanese Philharmonic Orchestra uh, and I'm going to be singing with uh, the big uh, Tarab singer Sumayyab Al-Baki and the Philharmonic Orchestra the 23rd in Igdi um, Saint-Joseph uh, in Mono. Voilà. Uh, so we will link uh, the concerts in the description for everyone who would like to attend and hear Matteo sing uh, on stage, you can um, check the description below and reserve your tickets as soon as uh, you can. Thank you, Matteo, so much for joining us. Thank you really, uh, really for the interest and the questions and the lovely interview, really. You're amazing. Um, so this is it, everyone. We will catch up next Tuesday. Stay tuned.